Welcome back to the series on multicolor epoxy pours and learning about uh, what impacts the quality and uh, success of a multicolor epoxy pour. In this video we're going to talk about one of the uh, questions I continue to get and that is does size really matter? Come on! Of course it does. Actually what they're talking about is is any vector too small to use in a multicolor epoxy project? And the answer to that is it depends. I would say there are vector sizes that are too small because what impacts the quality of a good multicolor project is the ability to have the epoxy pour deep enough such that it doesn't get milled away in the milling process. So in this video I want to talk about the impact of the size of a vector and the size of a bit and how they interact. I would like to give you a more scientific process for determining how deep a given carving should go based on the size of the vector and the size of the bit you are using. The deeper the bit goes, the more chance you have of having a nice clean definition and that resin that's poured into that area not disappearing during the milling process. So with that, I'm going to do a little review of the V-carve process, not much since it's been covered in previous videos, and then we'll talk about the relationship between size of the vector and size of the bit. And when I say size of the bit, I'm talking about the angle of the bit. Let's move into the discussion a little bit on review of how a V-bit works. If you've been following this series of videos, you'll recognize this project. This was the project in the series I used with the three color epoxy pour with the black, white, and the green. With that, let's do a quick review of bits. Recall that, that when we're talking about a vector size, what we're talking about is the amount that will be carved in between these two lines. So when we're talking about uh, the vector size, let's say, we we'll use the inspection tool. The vector size for this one, for this vector, if we come and look here and come over here is 0 0.08 inches wide. So that's the vector size. It's the amount that will be carved. And recall that that has a direct impact on how deep a V-carve bit will go. So a V-carving toolpath will go, the V-bit will go down as deep as it needs to to be able to fit that width across the blade and it's dependent on the size of the bit. Let's look at it in a drawing that may be easier to see. What we have here is an example of three different angled V-bits. One's a 60 degree V-bit, one's a 30 degree V-bit, and one's a 15 degree V-bit. And if you look at the drawing setup, remember that we normally use 15 and 30 degree V-bits in multicolor epoxy projects. So this angle is the angle of the bit, and what I've got here is a line, and that line originally started right at the tip of the bit. So by looking at that, you'll see this bit, this line here, represents the surface of the wood. So this is where you would zero this bit. If I want to know what the width or the vector size is that would be cut uh, at one eighth of an inch in this bit, so let me take this line out, all I did was measure from this area to this area, that's one eighth. You can see 0.125, and so I then took the bit and I measured across the angle, and you can see that turned out to be 0.1443. So what that tells me is at one eighth of an inch, that that is going to cover 0.1443 inches. All right. Let's compare that same bit now. Let's compare that same distance. All of these are one eighth of an inch. So if I wanted this to go as a minimum 0.125 inches uh, deep, you can see if I wanted the carving to go 0.125 inches deep, 
I would need a vector size at least 0.1443 if I'm using a 60 degree bit. If I'm using a 30 degree bit, I need a vector size of 0 0.067. Why? Anything less than that, and this bit will not go to 0.125 inches. Let's look at a 15 degree bit. 15 degree bit to go 0.125 inches deep then my vector width would need to be 0 0.0329. And I use 1 8 of an inch, 0.125 inches, because that's typically the flat depth that we're going to put into our project. Our goal would be if we could get to 0.125 inches, we know that we will have enough epoxy in the carving to avoid being milled out. So once again, a real quick review, I use 0.125 inches to make sure I could demonstrate different bit sizes and the vectors. That's what this represents. This is a vector of 0.1443. This is a vector of 0 0.067. And this is a vector of 0 0.0329. And if we have that vector width, that means we can get to 0.125 inches deep. If our vector is any smaller for a 15 degree bit, a 30 degree bit, or a 60 degree bit than these, then we will not get the depth we want. So back to this example, if I wanted to get as deep as I possibly could, and let's review what this vector right here was. Let's go to the measurement tool. If I remember right, it was about 0 0.08 inches. Yeah, 0 0.0848 over here. 0 0.085. If I tried to use a 60 degree V-bit, there is no way that I would get very deep. Uh, remember, the minimum was 0 0.1443. Uh, and to get uh, to 0.125 deep with a 30 degree V bit required at least 0 0.067. So it's right on the cusp if I'd get uh, with, a, with a 30 degree V bit. Let's take a minute to demonstrate that in the shop by measuring bits with some calipers. After we measure the bits in the shop with the actual calipers, we'll come back and we'll talk about a table that Mr. Rob Schuster provided us that has all of these calculations taken into consideration that you might find handy as you design your future projects. As a reminder about how these V-bits carve, I wanted to just show this physical bit. Normally this would be sitting in my CNC machine in this direction, but I'm going to flip it around because it's easier for me to use. And we're getting ready to talk about how deep a bit will go depending on the size of the vector. This happens to be, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a 60 degree V-bit. I didn't look at it real quick. Really doesn't matter whether it's 60, 90, but it's got a big enough head that I think you'll get the picture. So I'm gonna flip this thing around. Now remember, the way the V-carving toolpath works is that the bit will go down as deep as it needs to to cover the vector. And I'm gonna explain that more in just a little bit in a different part of the video, but I, I wanted to show this physical characteristic on the bit. So let's take a, a, a bit. So for example, if I measure the bit at this deep and I put a set of calipers on it, I can see that that bit is 0 0.191 inches wide. So if my vector was 0 0.191 inches wide, that's how deep the bit would have gone. So let's say I have a vector that's 0.03 inches, Point, 0.03 inches. How deep will this bit go? Well, I'm gonna show you that in a table, but physically I wanted to show you what it's gonna do. It's only gonna get you very, barely the tip of the bit in. So when we're talking about how deep a bit will go, it all depends on the geometry. Whereas on my 15 degree V bit, look how much deeper it goes. See, you can see the tip. I don't know how well this will focus, but you can see the tip. I hope, I hope this will focus once I get it on the camera. It's sticking out considerably more. So let's do a real quick comparison. This is... my 15 degree V bit, and this is my 60 degree V bit. I don't even see any tip actually sticking out. Significant difference in how deep the bit will go. 
So we've reviewed uh, how a V-bit or how V-carving works and how the bit goes into the depth of the material. And I didn't have this table before and actually I hadn't even scientifically figured all this out. I was kind of always going by the seat of my pants. I just knew that a 15 degree V-bit went deeper than the other one. I would put it into my design. I would do a trial cut with the V-carve uh, Pro tool path and then I'd hover over it to try to see how deep it went and if it didn't go deep enough I would uh, try to do things to make it go deeper. Now by knowing the size of the vector we can actually determine how deep that bit uh, by knowing the size of the vector we can actually determine how deep that V bit should actually go and carve. So that's a good uh, thing to have. Now it's not convenient to sit there and try to draw these things in VCAR Pro and put the little grass in like I was demoing it on. That seems kind of silly and uh, would be a lot of extra work. But we have a tool now, thank you to Mr. Rob Schuster, who's willing to share this with everybody. I really appreciate it, Rob. And here's what the tool looks like. As you can see, the tool actually takes into account, let's see if I can make it any bigger here. All right. So as you can see what the tool does, it takes into account the angle and degrees for each of uh, popular V bits, uh, 90 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 and 30 and 15 across the top. And then it has how deep that bit should go based on the width of the vector. The depth that we're typically looking at is we want greater than 0.1 but we tend to want somewhere around and I'm going to highlight this in green so the sweet spot for our vectors are typically between 0.12 and 0.13 the initial vector will probably go down to 0.15 with a flat depth of 0.15 and all the other vectors we typically set with a start depth of 0 and a flat depth of 0.125 and that's what we're trying to shoot for so 0.12 or, or, or more is, is good. Uh, 0.11, you're starting to get iffy about milling it away, but you can still handle it as long as you're very careful. But between 0.12 and 0.13 of our vector is that deep. We should, we should not have uh, any real issues with the actual milling process. So now that we have this table, you can see what the depth is for any given vector which is really convenient. Uh, in the case of wanting a vector to go down 0.12 inches deep, we want a vector with a 15 degree of 0 0.03. With a 30 degree, we want 0 0.064 and so forth. So you can see that a 90 degree or a 60 degree vector uh, probably wouldn't cut it because you need a vector width of 0.139 and 0.24. And that's at 0.12. And in between those, is a good number and we saw that on the chart that we used. So going back to the chart that we were using in the previous discussion we set a 15 degree uh, vector or we set a 15 degree bit if we wanted to get 0.125 was 0 0.0329 and if you look over at Rob's table a 15 degree bit at 0 0.12, slightly less than this, 0 0.125 is 0 0.032. Looks like his table is pretty right on with our discussion. So as we can see, we now have this table to determine if a given vector size will result in a deep enough carving. And if it won't, we at least know how deep it will go when we're trying to judge the milling and finishing process. What a terrific tool, and I'm really appreciative to Rob to share it. He had said I could share this with anybody that wanted it. So like I did with my Excel spreadsheet, if somebody wants it, contact me via the comments section in here and I'll get it sent to you or via my email which is in the contact section of this YouTube channel. Well, it's been a real pleasure sharing this information with you. I really appreciate Rob having uh, completed this uh, Excel table we just talked about and being willing to share that with everybody. What a gracious gift from Rob. I appreciate that. 
This table can be used in many other aspects such as what's the necessary offset for a given uh, V-carve uh, text. If you're doing V-carve text and you're carving that as a stand-up text, the background of the board is carved one-eighth of an inch deep or one-quarter of an inch deep, you could use this table to tell you what the offset would actually have to be to have the text uh, displayed as you want them to. I'll talk about that in another video. I really appreciate uh, Rob sending this and I hope that the rest of you do too and can find this table useful. Let's do a quick review of what we covered in this material. So what we covered was a review of how the carving takes place and how the depth is limited by the angle of the bit and the vector. So it takes both of those. We also reviewed that for a good multicolor epoxy pour, you want the epoxy as deep as possible. And through using this table, you can determine when you look at your design and the size of a given vector, how deep you can expect a given bit to go. I think this table further explains why Shane and I were talking about our primary bits that we use are either a 15 degree or 30 degree V bit for our detailed work. And uh, Shane, I, I think, even mentioned that uh, he uses the 15 degree 90% of the time. That's similar to me. I use the 15 degree bit most of the time. So when you're trying to determine which bits to use, you can now go to this table. I hope you're enjoying your epoxy adventure and I hope things are going in a smooth direction for you and if you haven't gotten out in the shop to try one of these projects yet, let's get out in the shop and try it out. I would really like to uh, see how people are coming along. Feel free to share with me your projects through pictures or Instagram. I'd love to see how they're progressing. Wishing you a very good day, a good life, a good night. Until we uh, connect again, wishing you all the best. God bless. I'd appreciate it if you've gotten some good information from this video, that you like this video. Share it and comment. And if you like what you're getting, go ahead and subscribe so that you'll get notified of future videos. I will be doing other videos outside of the multi-pore epoxy. It's just that seems to be the biggest demand and I'm trying to help people out with that. I've got quite a bit of experience doing two-sided projects, tiling projects, and just general repair concepts on how to repair a project when it goes in the wrong direction. And all of those things will be coming out over the next weeks or months. Have a great day.